Today we're talking all about sleep and how to optimize your sleep. Sleep is the foundation of mental health, physical health, and performance of all kinds. Whether or not we will live as long as we possibly can or not, whether or not we suffer from dramatic age-related cognitive decline or not, there are a number of things that you're going to want to do and there are a number of things that you are going to want to avoid doing in order to optimize your sleep. What are the things that you can do throughout the day, the middle of your day and into the afternoon and evening hours that are really going to set you up for the best possible sleep later that night? Well, there are a few do's and there are a few don'ts. First of all, be careful about ingesting too much caffeine throughout the middle of the day. That's kind of an obvious one. Second of all, if you are a napper, and I raise my hand now, for those of you listening, I'm raising my right hand because I love naps. I've always loved naps. Should you nap? Should you not nap? That's a question that I get asked a lot and that I asked Dr. Matthew Walker when he was a guest on this podcast. Here was his answer and here's what the data support. It is fine to nap in the afternoon, but don't nap so late in the day or for so long that it disrupts your ability to fall and stay asleep at night for your major sleep bout. Okay, so naps are fine but don't sleep so long during the day or too late in the day that it disrupts your ability to fall and stay asleep. I should also say you do not have to nap. It's kind of an interesting phenomenon that happens on these podcasts and on social media where we'll talk about naps and the fact that naps are great and don't make them longer than 90 minutes. But then all the non-nappers get really worried. Like, wait, am I supposed to nap? I don't like naps. I wake up groggy. You do not have to nap. In fact, if you can make it through your whole day without napping, great, more power to you. But if you do nap and you find that naps serve you well, keep those naps shorter than 90 minutes for reasons related to all trading cycles and so forth. And make sure that you don't nap too late in the day that you are then staying up too late at night and having a hard time waking up the next morning. For those of you that exercise in the afternoon, understand that if you exercise very intensely, so this might be weight training or running or some other very intense exercise, typically that's going to further increase your body temperature makes sense, right? Based on everything we know about metabolism and body temperature. And it's going to so-called delay your circadian clock. It's going to make it such that you want to fall asleep a little bit later, maybe even a lot later. So if you're exercising in the afternoon or evening, and that's the only time you can exercise, or that's the time that you prefer to exercise, great. But be careful about ingesting too much caffeine in order to get the energy to do that exercise, because that caffeine will disrupt your sleep. And just know that you are delaying your circadian clock. You are making it such that you will naturally want to go to sleep later and wake up later. Contrast that with if you exercise early in the day, say immediately after waking up or in the first zero to four hours after waking, in most cases, that's not going to shift your circadian clock much. But this critical period two in the middle of the day is when you're going to want to leverage specific tools. And we talked about those, limiting caffeine intake, being mindful of the clock delaying effects of exercise, the fact that also if you're going to nap, you don't want to nap too long or too late into the day. Otherwise, it'll disrupt your nighttime sleep. So this critical period two or second critical period, I should say, during the middle of the day is a time in which you should be doing certain things and avoiding doing certain things. So that raises the question of whether or not you should also be getting a lot of light, in particular sunlight, throughout the day. So should you be looking at sunlight or bright artificial lights throughout the day? Now, on the face of it, you might just think, yes, you know, sunlight's great. Provided we're not getting a sunburn and we're not staring at the sun and damaging our, our eyes, we should get as much sunlight as we possibly can. In fact, we talked about this in the episode on hormones, about how getting light onto as much of our skin as we can throughout the day can really help in the production of testosterone and estrogen in both men and women in healthy ways that improves mood and libido and all sorts of things that are associated with well-being. However, because light is such a powerful stimulus for controlling the timing of your sleepfulness or sleepiness, I should say, and wakefulness, we might want to be cautious about how much light we are viewing in the afternoon, in particular in the early evening hours, right? Well, turns out it's not so straightforward. Viewing, so sunlight to the eyes, sunlight in the late afternoon and evening hours, so again, depends on time of year, depends on location that you happen to be in, but getting some sunlight in your eyes for, again, maybe five or 10, maybe 30 minutes, depending on how much cloud cover there is, doing that in the afternoon serves an additional beneficial purpose, which is you protect or you inoculate your nervous system against some of the negative effects of bright artificial light or even dim artificial light 
in the nighttime hours between 10 p.m. and 4 a.m., which is really critical period three. And we'll talk about what to do and what to not do during critical period three of every 24 hour cycle. But to make it very clear what I'm saying here, get that morning sunlight in your eyes, but also get some sunlight in your eyes in the late afternoon and evening hours when the sun is at so-called low solar angle, when it starts to descend in the sky. Again, you don't have to stare directly at the sun, although if you can catch a nice, beautiful sunset, go for it. But as the sun starts to descend, it triggers those same neurons in your eye that communicate with your circadian clock, but it communicates with a different component or different compartment within the circadian clock. That circadian clock is not just one thing, it's multiple things. And you have what are called morning oscillators and evening oscillators. And to make a long story short, the tool that I'm describing of looking at the sun in the late afternoon and evening, again, blinking is fine. Don't stare at the sun, but getting that sunlight in your eyes in the late afternoon and evening signals to that clock that it's evening time and that sleep is coming. It also serves as a second anchor or reference point for your body and your brain to know where it is in time. In the evening, by getting sunlight in your eyes again, and in particular sunlight that comes from low solar angle sunlight, well, that provides a second stimulus or a second reference point that tells your brain and body, hey, it's evening, the sun is descending. Now you might say, wait, how does the brain and these neurons know the difference between morning light and evening light? Well, those yellows and blues and oranges that you see in the evening sunsets, those signal to your brain and body that evening is there and that nighttime is coming. And they're really establishing a second reference point or wavefront of biological signals that are going to optimize your nighttime hours and your transition into really terrific sleep. So now let's talk about what I'm calling critical period three of each 24 hour cycle. So this would be the period of time of late evening. So it might be 6 p.m. for some, depending on when you go to sleep, or 7 p.m., extending into the hours in which you decide to get into bed and go to sleep, and then throughout the night. There are a number of things that you're going to want to do, and there are a number of things that you are going to want to avoid doing in order to optimize your sleep. First of all, you're going to want to avoid bright artificial lights of any color. Yes, of any color. You will find that if lights are very bright, doesn't matter if it's a blue light, a yellow light, or a red light, those bright lights will wake up your brain and body. They will activate the same mechanisms that were activated early in the day by sunlight. However, and here's the really diabolical twist. I mentioned this earlier, but the diabolical twist in the way that your brain and body respond to light is that early in the day, in the morning hours, you need a lot of bright light, ideally from sunlight, to be very alert and to wake up. But in the evening hours and nighttime hours, it takes very little light, very few photons in order to wake up your brain and body and to disrupt your circadian clock and disrupt your sleep. So what that means is that once the sun goes down, you would be wise to try and dim the lights in your indoor environment most days, right? I realize some nights you're gonna throw a party and have people over, you might not wanna dim the lights. Some nights you're gonna go out, you might view a lot of bright lights, but most nights, of your life, you're going to want to dim the lights in your internal environment. And ideally the lights that you do use, you would place low in that physical environment. So you would try and not use overhead lights, but rather rely on desk lamps or lights even placed low to the floor, even on the floor. If you are going to use light at night, and most people do, I would encourage you to use as little artificial light as is required to carry out the activities you need to require safely. That could be studying, in which case you might need a little bit more light in order to read or study. If you're watching a television show or you're watching something on your computer, dim that screen way, way down as dim as possible while still, of course, being able to view what you need to view. Try and avoid using overhead artificial lights. The absolute worst lights are going to be overhead fluorescent lights of the sort that you would uh, have in the supermarket or uh, that you would see at a gas station or something of that sort, because that bright light exposure will absolutely quash, it will eliminate any melatonin that happens to be circulating in your brain and body. Now, melatonin, a lot of people think of as a supplement, but melatonin is naturally released as the evening comes about and into the nighttime hours. It's a hormone that makes you feel sleepy and allows you to fall asleep. So viewing bright light in the late evening hours and nighttime hours is really not good for your sleep quality and your ability to fall and stay asleep. Health Lab.